Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about eight kinds of technology that you would still want to have even if there were to be some sort of collapse type situation. The first kind of technology that you want to have is going to be a way to generate or collect and store power. There's a lot of folks out there that prefer gas generators and those do a really good job keeping larger things running pretty much as long as you need them to, that is, until you run out of fuel. So if we're talking about a long-term situation, then gas generators, while they do serve a purpose, you can't depend on them too much because eventually you are gonna run out of fuel. So where I see a gas generator fitting in in a long-term collapse type situation is you either use it at the beginning to uh, keep your, your food preserved in like your freezer as long as possible, or you save your gas and you use it only when you absolutely need to so that you can power larger, more power hungry devices or appliances. And then on the other side of things, you have solar energy. And I really think that things like solar generators are gonna be your bread and butter during a long-term collapse situation because they're going to continue to operate long after you run out of fuel. Now, one thing that works extremely well with things like solar generators is going to be rechargeable batteries, and those come in several different types. You can get the rechargeable double A's and triple A's made by Inaloop. Then there's also proprietary batteries and things like flashlights, power tool batteries, but the thing is, you're going to be able to use that solar generator pretty much of any size to recharge batteries for your essential devices, so you'll be able to use those very long term. The next kind of technology that you need to have after a collapse is going to be lighting. And when it comes to lighting, there's a couple different types that you should have. The first one is going to be area lighting. That's, that could be something like uh, an LED lantern that you use to illuminate an entire room. Maybe you take it outside while you're working or doing something else. Then the second kind of lighting is going to be personal lighting. That's gonna be things like flashlights and headlamps. And then you could probably put weapon lights under this category as well. I know that those are important. If something goes bump in the night, you'll be able to keep both hands on the wheel so to speak, while you're dealing with that. The next kind of technology that you wanna have after a collapse is communication technology. You can have just normal AM, FM radios, of course, emergency radios that can pick up NOAA frequencies are better. As long as society as a whole is still up and running somewhat, then you're probably gonna be able to pick up information using those. But if we're in a situation where literally everything has collapsed, there's a chance that there might not be as much activity going on on AM and FM frequencies. So in a situation like that, you really would need the ability to pick up ham radio frequencies. And that's you're going to need a specialized radio for that. And when it comes to short-range communications, walkie-talkies are a good option. You're not going to be able to use them to communicate with somebody on the other end of town. But, I mean, maybe if you have a few acres of land you could communicate with um, loved ones or others in your group from one end of that property to the other. So, I mean, those are still definitely worth looking into. The next kind of technology that you wanna have after a collapse is security devices. The first one's gonna be motion-activated security lighting, and for obvious reasons, solar-powered um, variants of those are gonna be the way to go just because they're gonna be able to operate long-term. They allow you to know if somebody's accessing a certain area of your property when that light kicks on. It's something that kind of grabs your attention. That's what I used mine for in the backyard. Wasn't necessary, well, it did allow me to, to see a little bit better, but what it really did is while I was sitting in the living room, that light kicks on, I knew that there was something going on. Thankfully, most of the time it was a possum or something like that but it could be two-legged varmints as well. Then I've talked about them in a few other videos, motion-activated driveway alarms. Those are battery-powered sensors that use like radio waves to communicate with a base station in your home. I like to have one pointed at the front door, then also others near gates leading to my backyard. So they work very well for that. 
And then a budget option is just the little magnetic uh, door and window alarms. I know most of the time you can get a multi-pack of those, depending on what brand you get, somewhere between like $15, $20, $22, something like that. And I mean, they run on just a little button battery, so you might want to pick up a few extras of those. But I mean, it's a cheap way to, like maybe if you have a security system, that way you can still have some sort of alarm if the grid goes down because they're completely independent of the grid. And then also kind of related to security is if you have any sort of like holographic optics or anything like that or red dots, then you want to make sure that you have some spare batteries for those. Uh, the one that I have, it's not rechargeable and the battery is not all that easy to find. It's not something I can just walk into Bob Mart and find and then walk out with. I have to actually go to a battery store. So if you have something like that that you would be using, then of course you want to stock up on the batteries for those. The next kind of technology that you need to have after a collapse is power tools. And I think for preppers, cordless power tools are going to be the way to go in most cases. And the reason why is cordless tools are going to be easier to keep up and running and they're going to be less power intensive than their corded variant. So if you take a circular saw, for example, a corded circular saw on startup is gonna require 3000 watts in order to get up and going. You're either gonna need a gas generator for that or you're gonna need a very large, very expensive solar generator, solar power station. Then you take a cordless circular saw, for example. You're not actually trying to power the circular saw in that case. You're just trying to recharge the battery. And in a situation like that, you're only going to need a little, I think a little over 100 watts in order to be able to recharge that battery. And that's on a fast charger. You're going to be able to use even a very small solar power station to be able to power up those batteries. And the good thing about having tools is you're going to be able to fortify things around your home quickly. You're going to be able to make repairs to your home. And then also it could be something valuable that you can use to trade your skill for stuff that you need that you don't have. The next kind of technology that you want to have after a collapse is going to be your cell phone and your computer. Hear me out on this one. I know that you're not going to be able to make calls. You're not going to be able to access the internet in a collapse. I get that. So all my little trolls out there who were just waiting to Type something mean, go make yourself a taquito or something because I'm not stupid. But point is, those things can hold a ton of information in them. So as long as you can power them up, you can still access those resources. And don't get me wrong, a good survival library consisting of physical books is definitely the way to go to collect and store information long term. I understand that and I practice that. I have a ton of different survival books. I have the entire Foxfire series for crying out loud in printed form. But I think it would be a bad idea to not take advantage of the vast supply of like uh, useful PDFs that are out there and something like your cell phone or your laptop would be able to hold on to those for you so that you can access them when you need to. Then when it comes to cell phones, of course, you have your apps on there as well. I know on my cell phone, I have like the SAS Survival Guide. I have the book too. But one thing I really like is I have this app that shows how to tie knots using little 3D animations. And that is the best thing that I have ever seen to help teach somebody how to tie different kind of knots. Then of course, there's your photos of your loved one, uh, your loved ones, if maybe you get separated from them. A picture on your cell phone is gonna be a lot more useful for helping you find that loved one than just a verbal description of them. And then also another good thing about a camera is, let's say you have some sort of equipment that you're relying on and then something breaks down on it. You can take a picture of the part that you're needing and if there's somebody around that you can trade parts with, you can show them exactly what you need rather than giving them a verbal description which maybe you could accidentally get wrong or they could misunderstand. Something that somebody can see is going to be a lot better. 
And then also, I mean, if you're needing to do something like, I guess, gather intelligence for some reason or another, then your cameras on your cell phone are going to be a good option if you can get up close. But I mean, also kind of in this category could be, uh, I mean, cameras. If you have somebody in your family that does photography and they have a um, kind of a, a longer range lens and that camera can use rechargeable batteries, then that might be something that you might want to keep in operation as well. The next kind of technology that you want to have after a collapse is refrigeration. That's going to help you out in a couple different ways, but the main one's going to be preventing food spoilage. And when using refrigeration after a collapse, you've got to kind of be smart with how you do it. You're not going to be able to run something like a side-by-side -side refrigerator just because it uses way too much power. You're not going to be able to keep up with it. But some things like small box freezers, for example, those are going to be much more doable. And then probably a better option, at least for a lot of people, especially if you're not needing to keep a whole lot of stuff refrigerator, is going to be something like a 12-volt refrigerator. Those use far less power. They are smaller. But if you're wanting to take some food with you when you're bugging out, they're a good option. And they're also a good option if... You want to keep things like medications refrigerated. I know some things, I think like insulin and some others, they do need to be kept cool in something like a 12 volt refrigerator. A lot of the time you can adjust the temperature where you need it and they're not going to use a whole lot of energy from something like a solar power station. Which leads me into the last main type of technology that you would want to have after a collapse and that's going to be medical equipment. And the first thing that comes to mind with that is going to be stuff like a CPAP machine. I know whenever there's a storm that knocks out power people are scrambling to the hardware store to find a generator so they can power their loved ones CPAP or other similar machine. And a lot of your larger solar power stations, they're capable of running those things for at least a couple of nights, maybe more. Like I know that I saw some specs for the EcoFlow Delta Max, and it was able to power one uh, 40 watt one, I think for 35 hours. So, I mean, that's a few nights. And of course, just set it outside during the day, let it charge up, and you should be fine keeping that running pretty much indefinitely if you're able to continue to get sunlight to, to keep it charged up. Then there's also other medical devices that you may want to have as well. I know a humidifier comes to mind. They don't use hardly any power at all. You can actually run one using a very small solar power station, but if you or a loved one gets a cold, which I mean, that's going to happen, you know, being able to use a humidifier is going to be um, beneficial because you're going to be able to, um, you know, keep their throat from drying out and then all that kind of stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all have a good and thanks again.